So I got to go up to the ICU after he had his heart attack. He was holding his hand up, and I still don't know if he was trying to hold my hand or if he was trying to straighten out the IV. And we didn't say a whole lot. We were really interested in this EKG monitor because it was showing something under the surface, and we didn't know what it was. It, just like this was the lesson in his life. You know, what's under the surface? What's, what's love about? And it was the last time I saw him alive. There's another world just under the surface where love and creativity and fear and guilt are forces of nature. You think you can't see the atomic structure in a crystal, but you can. It's there in plain sight, in the angles, the color, the hardness. My grandfather taught me this. You might wonder what a geologist could teach about the spiritual dimension, but their whole job is seeing what's under the surface. Could I have figured out the EKG? Should I have held his hand? Sometimes you don't realize how guilty you feel. It's like an undertow. You don't see it until you're already drowning. These old codgers with these things called divining rods, witching sticks, said that they could find water under the surface better than a geologist. And actually, my grandfather agreed. My life became dedicated to looking for what's under the surface. I didn't know what I was looking for or what I'd do if I'd found it. And then the nightmares started, and I didn't know where they were coming from. I didn't understand what they were trying to tell me. Is it silly? Is it profound? I got a magazine and read an article about lucid dreaming. And in this lucid dreaming thing, you're aware in your dreams. Like you practice all the time. You gotta pinch yourself. Am I dreaming now? Am I dreaming now? And it worked. It made the dream stop. But then I really was alone. What does the water mean? The warmth of the gentle ocean tide? The destruction of the maelstrom of chaos? What does the water mean? My attending professor in medical school kind of brought me to life. With the simple diagram, she could explain how our minds work, why we love, why we hate, why we feel so alone sometimes. But then I had a dream. I was back in college chemistry lab. The dream chemical represented love. Maybe I could keep the chemical locked away so I would never lose it. In the dreams, I'm working with this chemical. It's the most interesting green color. I love this chemical. But at the same time, I have to keep it trapped like in the bottle. I even have a lockbox. Uh, I, I think the chemical is me. You feel like you need me, but you're always wanting to control me. You freak out if I say something that you don't like. You're always trying to hide things from me. You want to control me, just like the chemical in the dream. Nah, <laughs> you psychoanalysts are all the same. You make everything about you. This is about chemistry lab. Well, it is about your past, but it's about your grandfather. You didn't want to lose him either. Something to it, but, but why green then? Have you noticed the color of my cardigan? Oh no, this is a dream about you. You wear that all the time, don't you? Every day. <laughs> it is you, and I guess it's about my grandfather too. I really didn't want to lose him. The psychoanalysis connected the two realms. Like the divining rod, we could see the guilt, the love, the wishes. Now that I'm a psychoanalyst, I hear people's stories and people feel alone. People feel alone all the time and they don't even realize it. Forgiveness is not about forgetting, but forgiveness, even of ourselves, does involve acceptance of what is, of what was, and of what can be. Acceptance allows possibility.